You ready to be a gamer? <laughs> this is sick. Stasis cell goes crazy on this turn. You tell him nervous. <laughs> but Mark II, got a gun. Welcome back everyone to three floating fight night. Skirmish season is upon us. So today we have some blitz gaming for you for the first time on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. Uh, no. And the two heroes that we're about to throw down on are some of the most <laughs> unique heroes in this game. So get ready for some fascinating flesh and blood interactions. Thank you as always to our sponsors, fabrec.gg, the greatest minds in flesh and blood. Rosetta is almost upon us. And if you are ready to build your next CC deck with the Rosetta heroes, you're gonna need all the resources at fabrec.gg to get you on your way. You're gonna need their articles. You're gonna need their deck building resources. So make sure you head over to that website and check them out. I certainly needed them to understand what the heck my hero does. And thank you, of course, to Legend Story Studios for sponsoring the channel. They are mama and papa. We, <laughs> we love those guys. So thanks to everyone at LSS for continuing to support the channel and help out the show. If this is your first time watching the channel, welcome. If you've been a long time watcher, thanks for hanging out. If you would be so kind, go ahead and give this video a like, hit that subscribe button or share this video with your friends it helps the channel out a ton and helps us keep doing this and getting more flesh and blood goodness to you. And speaking of the show, we have a fun little giveaway for you today. As Rosetta looms, we have this Aurora playmat. I won it at the Armory. Blitz Gaming, in fact. With, with the list you're about to see today, I won this at the Armory by getting second. Thank you, Zen. So with Rosetta on the horizon, we wanted to throw a little Rosetta swag your way. So stick around to the end of the video for details about how to enter for that. And now, Without further ado, let's get right into this fight night featuring Aiden on Data Doll Mark <laughs> 2. <laughs> and Sam on The Emperor. He's back and he's crazy. Let's get right into this blitz constructed game. <laughs> Okay, this is the die roll of the century. Yeah. It's, it's, it's blitz, dude. I got, I got 15 life. Like I got three intellects. <laughs> so. We are at our ultimate power. Blitz gaming. The first time that we've brought this format onto the main channel for a fight night, I get to play this weird little hero data doll. It's probably abundantly clear. I do love Mechanologist. It's my favorite class in the game. And I've always been fascinated by this hero. Just even looking at her and seeing the little three in the bottom left corner is wild to think about. Three card hands seems unplayable, right? But then you remember that she's a Mechanologist. Most classes really struggle to find their action points and Mech just gets to do it for free off the top of the deck. And that's not the only thing that Data Doll gets to do for free because her hero ability is whenever an item is banished from the top of your deck from any effect, it just enters the arena. So even though I only have three cards in my hand, it means I actually get to kind of play five, six, seven, eight intellect if all my banishes hit items because those cards come in at no expense to my action point, at no expense to my resources, and then also just upgrade everything that I'm doing. I very rarely want to pitch and I very, very rarely want to defend. When I'm laying down cards, I want to be boosting. So on a turn to turn basis, I'm trying to boost a card, activate Foundry Heart on every turn to get two additional shots at hitting those items onto the board, using the extra resources from the Foundry Heart to pay for a couple one for four boost cards and load my pistol. If I hit crank items off the top, I can use those for action points to send multiple pistol shots. And against Emperor, I'm going to banish as aggressively as possible to try to hit my prevention effects so that I really just assemble this giant force field of damage prevention that he just can't break through, overwhelm him with the value that three, four, five, six items gets you. What's up, y'all? It's Blitz O'Clock, which means I am playing Emperor, the Drakai of Acer. Acer? This guy. Rest in peace. This dude, he's from the Command and Conquer art. You may recognize that art. He is a royal draconic warrior wizard hero which means he has access to a crazy card pool, but he can only play red cards in his deck. You might wonder, what's the benefit of having this huge card pool if you can only play red cards in your deck? 
let me tell you. Being a warrior means I get access to some great arms equipment in Iron Song Versus, a two block temper, which means that's three life for me over the course of the game, and I only start at 15 life, so I need all the armor block I can get. The other great part about the warrior card pool is these vigor token generators, meaning I can do a bunch of my one for four arcane spells without having to pitch a card. And then of course, being the emperor, I am royal, and being draconic, I get access to blaze headlong, and of course, Tome of Imperial Flame, which actually it was good in Dromai, but it's even better in the Emperor. You play Tome, you immediately get two floating, activate your flame scale furnace, boom, command and conquer on demand and with Tome off of just one card. Nuts. And then of course, the wizard, meaning I get access to Storm Striders, and Storm Striders means I can kill my opponents on their turn, utilizing my flame scale furnace to get enough resources to come in for either a one for four or a two for five arcane spell, and then the waning moon on the back end to do seven seven, eight, even nine damage sometimes on my opponent's turn. One of the best feelings in flesh and blood. So that's really what I'm playing towards. Huge shout out to Naib Mobasir, one of my favorite players in this game, for supplying me with his skirmish winning list. The top of Aiden's deck is gonna determine a lot about this game for the both of us, and I'm ready to command and conquer. Rest in peace. All right. Seven is a classic number. You know it's even more classic? What? Eight? Five. Five. <laughs> What you want? I will elect to go first. <laughs> I've heard this is very bad for me. You ready to be a gamer? <laughs> Mark two, baby, let's go. Let's absolutely go. <laughs> Enlightened strike, choosing the mode, plus two for seven. I hope your hand is items. <laughs> I'll block six. Take one. Take one. Down to 19. I will pass to you. And Arsenal discard. I will draw back to three cards. For sure. Did he draw attacks or did he draw items? Hope he just does not. To be a zero to 60 for three boosting. A Hadron Collider. For sure. So, Data Doll says, whenever a Mechanologist item with cost two or less is put into my banished zone from my deck, instead, Put it into the arena. Hadron Collider is pretty interesting because it comes in with four steam counters, but it also has crank. So since I didn't spend an action point to just yeet this into the field, I technically now have a window to remove a steam counter from this and go up in action points because this has go again. The question is, will I be doing that? And I think the answer is no. I, I'll just let this be a Hadron Collider here with four steam counters. Three damage coming at you. We are going to block this zero to 60 for three. I got no reactions. I do also have no reactions. We're gonna close the chain to activate Teclo Foundry Heart. Once per turn action, pay one, banish the top two cards of my deck, then I gain resources for each Mechanologist card that is banished this way, go again. And I can only activate this if I boost this turn. <laughs> I will pitch this item that I drew, pay for the resource cost, finish one, two. Dissolving Shield. This enters the arena thanks to Data Doll's ability. It comes into the arena with three steam counters. It has crank. I'm not going to be cranking here. It's just gonna protect me, hopefully, in the future because I have three in it. I will now get two resources. All right. Now, now I'm gonna outpace you. Yeah. Boost, outpace, costs one, swings for four, and it now has go again, and it can't be defended by equipment. Boom. Boom. Hadron Collider. Blows up all four steam counters, giving it plus four. So it's right. coming in for eight go again. Eight go again, he says. So I will line up a block with this test of vigor. You testing me? I'm testing you, and that means I want to clash. All right. Three, two, one, clash. Test of vigor. Three. You so get a vigor. rocket rocket. So you in the clash, you get a vigor. Thank you. I will now go to reactions and sink below. Okay, I'm sinking. No, I'm not sinking that card because I don't want the test of vigor on top. No way I want the test of vigor right now, so I will not sink. So I'll block eight. Covering that, so we're gonna close the chain again. Pay one to load the Teclo Plasma Pistol that my mother, Dash, gave to me. Mark one didn't have a pistol. <laughs> but Mark two, got a gun. <laughs> coming in for two damage. Okay. There we go. No go again. Two damage, I will just block with my Arcanite Skullcap that currently blocks for two. Yeah, you start at 15, so. All right, that is my whole turn. I will pass to you. Three new cards, drawing up to my intellect of three. It's not just four in the game. You might think that it's just by rules four. You can have three. I'm just gonna run this zap into your dissolving shield. Three uh, arcane. Yeah, I will be boop, getting the value out of that. 
And I will be arsenaling and pass to you. And by running that zap into my dissolving shield, you do in fact mean prompting me to activate its instant ability three times to remove three steam counters from it and prevent one damage, one damage, one damage. Start on my turn, this vigor is gonna pop. Can I have it back? Oh, flood a resource. Start things off with this sprocket rocket. Boost. This goes into the banished. I'm a little bummed about that. If an item or equipment was banished from boosting, it would be coming in for plus one, but instead it's just three go again. I'm going to declare no blocks. Dost thou have any reactions? No. Okay, I will be fate foreseen. I will leave that on the top. Close the chain. I just want to do this all the time. I'm going to pay one, activate foundry heart. Banish the top two. Dissipation shield, zipper hit. Dissipation shield enters the arena with four steam counters. At the beginning of my action phase, it ticks down by one, and it also has an instant ability that has a prevention effect. But this one is just one big instance of prevention based on the steam counters that are on. I now have two floating. Fender bender, Yuki Lee fender bender. That's Yuki's spoiler card. This is sick. <laughs> Back up protocol red, just flying into the arena with the steam counter. Have an option to crank here. I will not be cranking. Coming in for four and it has an ability that says this gets plus X where X is the number of equipment defending it. I'm not blocking it with equipment. I'm blocking with another test of vigor. Block four clash. I know it's on my top. Let's see if you can beat an E strike. You cannot. So I win the clash, get a vigor and block your four. Oh, this doesn't go to my hand. I'm not playing Victor. <laughs> and I will uh, also cheat. I will now just lay out this penetration script. I will not crank it. It comes into the arena with the steam counter, ticks down at the start of my turn. Mech attacks, get plus one. I will draw one, two, three, not four cards into my hand. I don't think it's mattering that you're only drawing three cards because you're drawing, you've drawn a card every turn. Vigor, popping, getting, resource, spending resource, life for a life. When this hits, gain one life. When I play life for a life, if I have less life than an opposing hero, it gets go again. So here we go, four, go again. I think we're just gonna block this for two here with my foundry heart. Taking two. Taking two, down to 17. All right, with my go again, I shall zap you. Three arcane damage. So Aiden has found these two shields, the dissolving shield and the dissipation shield, and they are keeping my arcane damage from getting across. Aiden is very keen on keeping them around because he doesn't want to lose too much life to my arcane damage, but I'm so glad that he let this life for a life hit here, even though I was supposed to gain a life and totally forgot. It also means that when I follow up with this red zap, Aiden's in a pickle because he wanted to keep the dissipation shield to block arcane damage, but now he's losing value by blocking three arcane damage with four prevention, and he probably should have just utilized the four prevention on the life for a life. So the fear of the arcane damage here is causing my cousin to lose a bit of value. And in a game of flesh and blood, especially in Blitz, every point of value is critical. So how about that life for life? Uh, you know, and so I probably should have, I, sh I should have gained the life because every, you know, if every point, every point of value is critical. I will activate the instant ability on dissipation to prevent four. There's a little prevention. <laughs> and that will pass my turn. I'm drawing these four cards. They're going into my hand. Okay. These will crank down at sure, the start sure, sure. of my turn. Sure, 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 sure. So you're to 60. Or gonna be for four boost. Thanks. Thank you. Gosh darn it. Dissipation shield coming in. Three steam counters. Thanks to Data Doll. Coming in for four because penetration script gives all mech attack action cards plus one damage. Four go again. I have an Arcanite skull cap that still blocks for one. Mm -hmm. I will choose to block for four. The swell tidings. We're gonna close the chain. Activate Foundry Heart. What do you mean, ah, you've hit it every turn. <laughs> Two resources. And with that, we're gonna drop a very important card. Uh-oh. It's not working. I can't build the perfect deck. I got it. Guys, I have an idea. The ultimate flesh and blood website. We can find synthesized data from decklists from all over the world, and you can see which cards are played the most in each hero. Articles written by the best pro players in the game. Your deck building ideas, your strategic ideas can be realized in flesh and blood. Well, Jacob, we got great news. That all exists, dude, at fabrec.gg. Oh, that's incredible news. Go to fabrec.gg and level up your game. Today. 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 
the microprocessor. This is a data doll specialization. It costs two, it's blue item, and it has three different modes. And you know what? What? I'll just talk to you about them when I start using them. That's gonna be the end of my turn. I'm going to pass over to you. Blaze Headlong. Blaze. For four. If I played another red card, it gets go again. Block with this adaptive plating, which has Galvanize, and Galvanize says destroy an item I control. When I do that, this gets plus two defense, so that is gonna be blocking for three with Blade Break. Okay. I will be in reactions, playing Sigil of Solace, okay. gaining three life, and now giving Blaze Headlong go again. I have no reactions, so I'll be taking one here. Okay. Down to 16. How about another Blaze Headlong coming oh. in for four? You know what? We're just getting value out of our fridge right now. We're gonna once again block with this adaptive plating and galvanize the backup protocol red I have here. Blocking three, taking one, down to 15. I will pass to the end of my turn. These platings are gonna just like Tony Stark the items on my board. <laughs> and it's just gonna shatter. I got four cards. You're nice. Right. Start of my turn, Dissolving Shield does tick down one sad face. But we've installed a brand new <laughs> microprocessor into my noggin, and we're gonna activate the second once per turn action on its little menu mm -hmm. of items mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm playing an RPG now. Bing, 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 bing. Going to draw a card, and then I will put a card on top of my deck. It is going to be interesting. We're staring down the menus, data doll specialization. We've got a three course meal here, folks. Appetizer, entree, dessert, and so many options. And honestly, this is the card that really smooths out data doll's three intellect problem and being able to draw a card and then pretty much guarantee an item on top. And here after I activate its second mode, I'm staring down two items, dissipation shield or tecla pounder. And I can only put one of these on top of my deck. Sam is at 17 life. So looking at the two item choices and looking at Sam's life total, one of these cards is getting pitched at the end of the turn because I can't afford to arsenal it. And the other's going straight into the field after a boost. Teclo Pounder gets me damage now and a Teclo Pounder at the end of the game really doesn't do much. I need more pressure on the board. So Teclo Pounder's the perfect choice to micro process onto the board. And Dissipation Shield could be incredibly clutch at the end of the game when Sam will be wanting to combo off with his Storm Striders and being able to just for free rip some prevention off the top of my deck, put up that final shield to land in that final boost for the kill. It's an easy decision. We're Teclo Pounding and stocking that shield for later. I will put this on top of my deck. And now that, that's an action. It didn't have go again, but microprocessor says the first time I activate any of its abilities, I get an action point. Play this zero to 60 for four, boost this thing that I put on top of my deck, Teclo Pounder. Teclo Pounder, the classic. You love it and you love it even more when it's for free. Three steam counters. Once per turn when I boost an attack action card, I remove a steam counter from it and then give that boosted card plus two. So I will just be blocking this attack for three. I will be taking one. Data link boost. Yeah. This sprocket rocket. This is going to tick Tecla Pounder down. Buffing this up comes in now for five damage. On hit, I will opt one. No way I'm letting you opt one in this economy. I will block you for five with my Iron Song Versus and my Emeritus Scolding. We're gonna go for something just a little risky. You're gonna go for glory? Yeah, I'm gonna pitch Dissipation Shield. Okay. To activate Foundry Heart, floating one. Yeah. Banish the top two. Stasis Cell. Ooh. So we are going to go up to three floating. You got what I need. And the stasis cell is going to just yeet into the field. When this enters or leaves the arena, activated abilities of target equipment can't be activated until the end of its controller's next turn. So I'm gonna say no furnace for you. No, it's fine. This is gonna close the chain. Now we will load pistol. Yep. Then I'm going to activate microprocessor for the second time, this time for its ability opt one. And we will leave that on top. I will not get my action point back because this is the second time I've activated it this term. So these two resources don't really get used, but I did get a stasis cell out of it. We are gonna move on over to you. Classic lean flesh and blood, you'll draw three cards. I will be playing this Ravenous Ravel, revealing the top card of my deck. Here's the thing, if it's red, it's gonna come in for four. And most of the time you want it to be red on top. What's your hero ability say? It says you may only have red cards in your deck. So it's a scalding rain. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and come in for four with go again. I will say no blocks. Take four. We're going to activate the dissolving shield once, twice to prevent two damage. So I will take two. Cool. Down to 13. I hope that stasis sells. Stasising you. It's doing nothing, unfortunately, for you. I'm sorry. My next play is E Strike. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'll be bottoming the final card in my hand. I need to choose a mode here. Do I want the Scalding Rain on top or do I want to just hit you for seven? I think I want to just hit you for seven. Pretty good. Come on. So even though Scalding Rain is a beautiful arsenal target normally because it allows me to play towards my Storm Strider end game combo, this is actually the moment that I start to pivot game plans. I'm trying to posture here that this E strike for seven means that I'm trying to just put Aiden in the position where he can die at any time from an arcane blast. But in reality, I'm starting to count the cards in Aiden's deck and my life total advantage I'm hoping is high enough and his threat density is low enough as he keeps boosting Red attacks off the top of his deck. I'm thinking that this E strike for seven actually puts me more in the lane of finishing this game with Aiden having no threats left in the deck. And so that Scalding Rain is actually more valuable to me right now just as a three block because my deck has a lot of two blocks and even a bunch of no blocks. So knowing I'm gonna draw at least one three block on the turn is a-okay with me, especially now that I think I might be trying to fatigue. I am just going to block for one here with my Foundry Heart. That's all I got. Taking six? Taking six. Down two seven. We've got him right where we want him. Pass to you. I will draw this card and three random cards. The very first thing that I'm gonna do on this turn, yeah. since you have a Scalding Rain in hand, yeah. is going to be to activate the action ability on Stasis Cell, which is choose an equipment, it can't defend this turn, so I'm gonna choose your Blame Scale. So you can't block with it, but this has when this enters or leaves the arena, activated abilities of target equipment can't be activated until the end of its controller's turn, so I will also choose Flame Scale. So Flame Scale Furnace, as of now, cannot be activated unless I were to respond right now. Right now. With my Storm Striders. I will not respond. I will allow my flame scale furnace for the turn to go to sleep. Just remind me to wake it up. The furnace has been quelled as the foundry sings. I will <laughs> activate my microprocessor. Yep. I'm going to draw a card and then put a card from my hand on top of my deck. This one on top. Top. I will expedite, boosting a microprocessor Aye. into the field. So that's gonna come on in. And this is also going to get plus two for my Teclo Pounder. So we're up to five damage, go again. And this one has, when this hits, I may put an item with cost. <laughs> <laughs> what would it do if I let it hit? An item with cost one or less from your hand? Yeah, no, we're blocking for five. Every <laughs> single time we're blocking for five. I'm gonna close the chain. Okay. Activate microprocessor, the new one. Draw a card, put one on top of my deck. This guy. Now, activate Foundry Heart, pay one, banish the top two. Teclo Pounder and an Expedite. This comes in, three steam counters. Gulp. Float two, thanks to the Foundry Heart. Now I will send this zipper hit, boosting a backup protocol red into the field. I will crank, actually. So I'm gonna remove the steam counter from this to get an action point. Puts me to two action points since zipper hit has go again. This is going to tick down because that's a boost card that is seeing for the first time. Seven damage, two action points. Stasis cell goes crazy on this turn. Yeah. We're gonna block for a total of four on this turn with my Iron Song versus. Take three. Yep. Down to 14. All right, we're gonna close the chain. Destroy that versus fire this pistol that my mama gave me. Two damage with an action point remaining and a floating. Say no blocks and take your two. All right, going to close the chain to activate pistol's action of pay one, load it with a steam counter. Then I will activate its action to remove a steam counter, fire it once more, two damage. Take two, go to 10. That's the end of my turn. So we finally find our first Tome of Imperial Flame, and normally that means I can activate Flame Scale Furnace, go up to three floating, and immediately rip a Command and Conquer out of my deck onto the combat chain with my hero ability. It's a sick play and one I've been stoked to make, but the stasis cell here means I can't activate the flame scale furnace. So my ceiling on this turn just went from six to two with the waning moon activation. All of a sudden, Aiden's gonna be able to keep some more cards and stay at a higher life total, but I'm hoping that the threat of my arcane damage is enough to make him play a little scared, and then I can run him out of threats and blow him up at the end of the game. I am gonna play Tome of Imperial Flame. I'm gonna draw two cards. I'm going to pitch two cards immediately, so I don't wanna banish my hand. Now, if I had my furnace up, I could pitch into furnace and come in with command and conquer for six damage. But I'm actually so stoked because I just drew two no blocks and now those go to the bottom of my deck. Because I have now played a non-attack action card, I will spend two resources to just come in for the first time with Waning Moon. So this is two arcane damage. Coming at you. Give me a card or take the two. I say no AB here. Okay. Take two. All right. Down to five. I'm gonna put these no blocks on the bottom of my deck and draw four cards. So, start of my turn. This will destroy. 
Welcome back, Flamescale Furnace. Died 2024. Welcome back, 2024, <laughs> Flamescale Furnace. I will activate microprocessor. Gotta draw a card, put one on top of my deck. Good. Doing it. Put this on top. Any response? No. Can you tell I'm nervous? <laughs> T-Bone. Boost. Plasma Mainline. This comes in with five steam counters on it. That is going to trigger both of my Teclo Pounders. Yeah. Ticking down, this one destroys because it hits zero. And that's gonna give this plus four. It's coming for seven and it must be blocked with equipment. It simply must be blocked. I will block two. Take five. Take five. I'm gonna close the chain. Yep. We're going to activate this microprocessor. No response. Drop. Top. Activate this for its effect. Banish card from the top of your deck. That is fine. Hadron Collider. It enters the arena with four steam counters, and when it enters the arena, Plasma Mainline has a trigger. When a Mechanologist item with cost two or less enters the arena under my control, I may move a steam counter from Plasma Mainline to that item. I'm going to do that. This will go to four, putting this to five, and then I will crank it to get my action point back. So they're both at four. Now I will activate this microprocessor for its banish effect. Boom grenade. Good God. <laughs> Look at, I, look at this. <laughs> I will move a counter onto that. And then I will crank the boom grenade to get my action point back. Yep. Now going to T-bone. Boost It's part of the cost. Dissipation shield. Final little defenses here. I am going to let the main line put an extra counter on that for me. So this comes in with five. This has already seen a boost, but this hasn't. Hadron Collider will blow up. Give this plus four. We've got five. Go again, must be blocked with equipment. Well, I will give you my Storm Striders, because they have zero defense. Boom, defenses. grenade on hit as well. I will not let it hit, don't you worry. I will block for three, and then I will go to react, and I will slap Happy, which will prevent two damage and make me a bigger. Ooh. I'm gonna close the chain. Okay. Because I can, why not? Activate the third effect on this. It was just opt. Okay. One of these two cards. I don't remember if that's the Stasis Cell or if the card under it is the Stasis Cell. How much you want on it? How much I want on it? Yeah. $10 says, that stays a sell, $10. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving to my end here. What are you doing with the stays a sell? Top or bottom? <laughs> I got one card in hand. You're right, no, I got nothing for you. All right, all these cards. Vigor is gonna go ahead and pop and give me a resource. My turn is gonna be Scar for a Scar. I do not have less life than you, so it does not have go again, but it's coming in for four. I need an effect. <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> I need something to put a card on top of my deck. From your hand? Just yeet it there? All right, fine. I will old him ice react you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no blocks. I will take four. To one he goes. Arsenal, you could never guess what cards in my arsenal right now. Mm -hmm. Boom grenade, ticks down. Dissipation shield, ticks down. You can do whatever you want, King. <laughs> okay, cause- Okay, cause <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> this is okay, actually yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, tell me what you want to do. <laughs> I found a way to get a card on top of my deck. <laughs> oh, I can do it. I will play out. Playing this doesn't have go again. Ah. <sighs> Well, it's my turn though. So. It's your turn. I'm gonna play out this boom grenade. Plasma mainline will move a counter on into it. I will crank it, keep my action point. Sick. We're gonna swing a data link boost. I've got, I got three damage coming at you. Stasis cell in hand. On hit, eight. Yeah, I can't, I can't kill you because of your dissipation sphere. So I will block you for three. I'm gonna move to end. That's fine. So yeah. you, you wanted a card on top of your deck, right? So I'll come in with Swell Tidings. Five arcane damage. We've had the AB sitting on the board this whole time. I will AB dos, mm -hmm. float one. You got three damage coming over the top, so I am going to activate the instant ability of Dissipation Shield to prevent the remaining damage of it. Okay, that's all I can do. I'm going to activate Microprocessor, banish the top card of my deck. Hold on, I have a response. I will be activating Storm Striders, pitching a slap happy. I will be playing a Scalding Rain, pitching one. Before you bring the stasis cell in, I will activate my Flame Scale Furnace, pitching another one, gaining three floating. With the three floating, I will activate Waning Moon after the Flame Scale Furnace resolves. That's gonna be a total of three arcane damage from the Waning Moon and four arcane damage from the Scalding Rain for a grand total of seven arcane. No! No! 
GG. GG. <laughs> Go to sleep. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't flashy. But it was successful. Turns out, uh, you know, when you've got your cousin's number like this, victories transcend formats. Beyond classic constructed, beyond even limited. In the blitz, feels great, baby. Already off the start of this game, it was gonna be a tough one. Being forced to go second with Data Doll is always a bummer, and I think that E strike on that first turn really did matter. Just ripping those two premium red boost cards out of my hand, I would have loved to hit all three of those on that first turn. Even though I'm not a long time Data Doll enjoyer, I am a long time mech enjoyer. Plasma Mainline, one of my favorite items in mech, finally really has a home. All these crank items and being able to cheat it in for free really have it just power up every thing in your deck feels so cool. I really think she's a super cool hero and I think Data Doll is way stronger than people give her credit for because they're just afraid. You're, you're just afraid of that three intellect. You're not ready for the three intellect life. I am. Blitz gamers, this is, wait, the second time I've fatigued you on the Emperor and you are in a mech, do you remember? In, in Pittsburgh when we played in the Blitz event. Pittsburgh, yeah. We played in the Blitz event. There's the moment, I'll put it right here. I faced four dashes in the run. One of them was my cousin Aiden, who I mercilessly slaughtered. You fatigued me. Mercilessly, at one life. Can't find one damage, that's a you problem. <laughs> Can't find five damage, that's a you problem. So I guess, you know, listen, I think the moral of the story is Aiden's gotta be better at not getting fatigued, you know? Because I didn't even do anything that crazy. I just, I just blocked. In, in all honesty, I think this was a good example of just read and response flesh and blood. In the games we played before this yesterday, I blew Aiden up with arcane damage and I finished the game using cool tome turns and doing a lot of arcane at the end of the game But this game he found all those prevention effects and thus I could not get any of my arcane damage across And I had to shift game plans and hope that all those red attacks that I was seeing boost off the top of the deck Were going to haunt him in the end game as he had a board full of items But nothing to do with it, you know all dressed up with nowhere to go is data doll and at the end of the day I'm going straight to the all valley tournament and taking the first place title. Rest in peace to Aiden. How you feeling? You feeling a little tired? Huh? Feeling a little tired? A little fatigued? fatigued. <laughs> I had so many items. You had so many I items. I had so many. And I had so much block value on my cards. Warrior, warrior and wizard. Warrior and wizard. I mean, listen, wizards, a lot of three blocks. Warrior, a lot, lot of three blocks. blocks. Draconic? Warrior. Not so much. <laughs> but warrior, a lot of armor, a lot of armor. Lot of armor couldn't really, couldn't really break through. It was very close. It was actually very close yeah. at the end. If you had basically kept, I do think the E strike. All the boom grenades showed up at the end I too. Know. I know. Yeah. Like those hadron colliders are nice, but it's way nicer when they go boom. Listen, Emperor might have done a lot of blocking in this game, but the deck is actually super explosive and super fun to play. And I hope you all will give it a chance out there at your Blitz events at home and beyond. And listen, take it from me, I got second in my weekly armory and that got me this beautiful Aurora playmat that we want to give to one of you out there watching. So thank you for sticking around and supporting the show. And here is how you can get this incredible playmat. Please, listen to Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> Please, let me stop talking. <laughs> For this giveaway, we have two ways to enter. You can either leave a comment on this video or share a link to it on Twitter with hashtag three floating. You can enter either way or both and we're gonna pick randomly from that entire pool. So get your entries in and win this incredible Aurora playmat. We couldn't be more excited for Rosetta. And the next time you see us on this channel, we will have found ourselves in Candlehold where life is eternal and death for the first time in a millennium has returned. See you in the next one. Flesh and blood! Flesh and blood!